atoms in your body, the nitrogen, the iron, the carbon, the, all of this are traceable to cosmic crucibles deep in the centers of stars. Every time astronomers use telescopes to peer deeper into the past, they find something new. The James Webb Space Telescope is a prime example of this. An enormous gaseous tendril of 10 closely packed galaxies spanning over 3 million light years was discovered by astronomers using data from the James Webb Space Telescope. We can now observe the invisible dark energy that binds the universe together. Scientists explain evidence that this huge cosmic highway goes back nearly to the edge of the universe, suggesting that this ribbon of gas and stars may constitute the oldest known thread of ancient energy. When did it typically wake up? In what way did it pre-exist the Big Bang and begin building itself some 570 million years later? How dark is this energy of the universe? Let's find out. A gigantic, unseen network with intertwining tendrils permeates the entire cosmos. This dark web is unseen, despite the fact that it organizes the stuff we can see in space. This is due to the fact that it is composed of dark matter, which has a gravitational attraction yet does not emit light. That is, up until this point, the web was hidden. Researchers have for the first time shed light on some of the universe's deepest recesses, the cosmos was hotter, smaller, and denser long ago than it is today. Additionally, it was often considerably more uninteresting. Density didn't vary all that much from place to place. Although overall, space was far more congested. In the early universe, conditions were generally the same everywhere. However, there were minute sporadic variations in density. Matter tended to flow into those nuggets because they had a somewhat stronger gravitational attraction than the neighborhood around them. As they grew larger in this fashion, their gravitational attraction to surrounding matter increased, leading them to continue to grow larger for billions of years. The spaces between the nuggets also disappeared as they enlarged. The wealthy increased in wealth, while the poor decreased in wealth across cosmic time. The dense areas eventually expanded to form the first stars, galaxies, and clusters, while the emptiness between them developed into vast cosmic voids. After 13.8 billion years of construction, the task is still not entirely complete. As more galaxies join groups of galaxies that are flowing into dense, rich clusters, matter is still rushing out of the voids. The cosmic web is the huge, intricate network of matter filaments that exists today. Our universe contains a great proportion of dark matter, which has no interactions with light or any of the normal matter that we can observe as stars, gas clouds, and other intriguing objects. Because of this, a large portion of the cosmic web is entirely invisible to us. Thankfully, as dark matter gathers, it also brings some ordinary matter with it to participate in the fun. Regular matter has transformed into stars in the densest regions of our universe, where the gravitational whispers of dark matter have influenced the normal matter sufficiently to combine. The stars and galaxies point us in the direction of the hidden dark matter, like a lighthouse on a dark coastline, providing us with a spectral outline of the true structure of the cosmic web. With this skewed perspective, the clusters are clear to observe. When viewed from a red-eye flight, they stand out like enormous cities. Given that it takes a significant amount of gravitational force to gather together that many galaxies, we can be certain that there is a significant amount of dark matter in those structures. On the other end of the spectrum, we can easily identify the voids, since they are the locations where none of the matter is present. We know that these voids are, for the most part, truly empty, since there are no galaxies to illuminate them. But the tiny lines of the threads themselves are what give the cosmic web its grandeur. These thin strands of galaxies, which span millions of light years and connect large metropolitan clusters, function as enormous cosmic motorways. The hardest component of the cosmic web to investigate is those filaments. There are a few galaxies there, but not many. Additionally, they come in a variety of lengths and orientations. In contrast, clusters and voids are geometrical toys. Therefore, despite the fact that we have known about filaments for decades thanks to computer models, we have had trouble actually seeing them. However, 
a group of ancient galaxies that may be the oldest strand of the cosmic web ever seen, has recently been uncovered by scientists using the James Webb Space Telescope. The stars above may appear to be dispersed more or less evenly on a clear night. All stars, however, are a component of a vast cosmic web that connects galaxies throughout the universe, like threads of spider silk, leaving immeasurably vast stretches of nothingness in between. Scientists have now provided evidence in a new study that this vast cosmic highway dates almost as far back as the creation of the universe. Astronomers have identified a gigantic, gas-filled tendril made up of ten densely clustered galaxies that span three million light-years using data from the James Webb Space Telescope. Scientists believe that this old strand of gas and stars may be the oldest known thread in the cosmos. Xiao Hui Fan, an astronomer at the University of Arizona and a part of the research team, said he was shocked by how long and how tiny this filament is. Only 830 million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was still very young, did the recently discovered filament originate. It is anchored by a superluminous celestial object with a quasar, a supermassive black hole, at its heart. The tendril was initially spotted by scientists because of this brilliant black hole. As part of the ASPIRE, a spectroscopic survey of biased halos in the Reionization Era project, Xiao Hui Fan and his group are investigating the effects of the earliest black holes on galactic evolution. One of the 25 early universe quasars that the research is aiming for is the one that was spotted here. This is one of the earliest filamentary structures that people have ever found associated with a distant quasar. Black holes, which act as gravity wells to gather matter, and occasionally by hurling it far out on cosmic winds, which whip up around extremely active quasars, are thought to have contributed to the formation of the cosmic web, according to the researcher's hypothesis. Even as the winds carry them across the universe, gravity maintains the connections between these strands of stars and dust. According to the researchers, the filament will eventually condense into a galaxy cluster resembling the Coma Cluster, which is located around 330 million light-years from Earth. Meanwhile, the James Webb Space Telescope also observed the farthest active supermassive black hole. Telescopes continue to astonish astronomers as they peer further into the past. This is the situation with the supermassive black hole at the center of the distant and ancient galaxy, Sears 1019. Just how early is it? Some 570 million years after the Big Bang, it had already existed and was putting itself together. The JWS also captured information about two other black holes as they existed roughly a billion years ago, when the universe was much younger. These galaxies and black holes have been found as a result of a unique JWS observing program. The Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Sears Survey is what it is known as. The goal is to acquire precise infrared and mid-infrared pictures and spectra of early far-off objects. In the early cosmos, objects radiate in both ultraviolet and visible light. However, their light has stretched into the infrared regime by the time it reaches us. The added benefit of being able to view objects that would otherwise be hidden is provided by infrared because it can also pass through dusty areas. Our understanding of that period in the history of the universe is expanded by the discovery of black holes in early galaxies. It has just passed the Big Bang. For instance, the discovery of the CR's galaxy and its accompanying active supermassive black hole caught astronomers by surprise. Sears 1019 was around when galaxies were only beginning to take shape. That means they must be diminutive and featureless. If there were black holes at such an early time, their masses would be small by black hole standards, right? Okay, so it's not that simple. As it happens, those black holes do have smaller masses. One of them at least remains abnormally huge. The proof for this is, according to Steve Finkelstein, PI of the Sears survey, JWS can examine both early galaxies and their black holes saying that, until now, research about objects in the early universe was largely theoretical. Black holes and distant galaxies are now visible and measurable with the Webb telescope. That's how potent this telescope really is. How impressive is the black hole in CR's 1019? There are three brilliant blobs, but no discernible disk, making up the galaxy. So it's still putting together its framework and producing new stars. 
We're not used to seeing so much structure and images at these distances, said Jehan Kartal Tep, an associate professor of astronomy at the Rochester Institute of Technology in New York and a member of the CR's team. Increased star production and activity near the galaxy's black hole have both been linked to mergers of galaxies. How about the young supermassive black hole it created? It has 9 million solar masses and is actively consuming gas. It's smaller than some other black holes from the same age, but it's still greater than anyone anticipated. It's intriguing because it appears to have originated soon after the Big Bang, at a time when the universe was still young. It's interesting to note that the black hole resembles the Milky Way's central black hole, Sagittarius A, more closely than previously thought. And that's intriguing because it's a mystery. Recent UT Austin PhD recipient and study leader Rebecca Larson remarked, Looking at this distant object with this telescope is a lot like looking at data from black holes that exist in galaxies near our own. There are so many spectral lines to analyze. The spectral lines provide additional properties, while the infrared view reveals the galaxy structure. For instance, spectra can identify the temperatures and velocity of high-energy outflows. The spectroscope records the black hole and its host galaxy in the case of CRS 1019. Its statistics show the rate of star creation as well as the black hole's thirst for gas. It will be intriguing to observe if additional galaxies in the CRS survey exhibit this scenario. These initial findings, however, are motivating scientists to improve their theories on black holes and galaxy formation in the developing universe. The focus of Sears is particularly on these items as they were during the reionization epoch. At that time in the cosmos, light started to move freely throughout the expanding universe. The gas between stars and galaxies was ionized by the light that originated from the first stars. Galaxies seem to have started to form around this epoch, and possibly much earlier. The survey data includes information on the accumulation of stars, stellar mass, the structural modifications that resulted in the galaxies and the development of those early black holes. Therefore, understanding this time period is essential for building a timeline of the universe's beginnings and development through the formation and evolution of those early galaxies. This is one of the main objectives of the JWST, which has just ended its first full year of infrared cosmological observation. On the other hand, Astronomers have found for the first time that stony extraterrestrial worlds may have a lot of water from the moment they develop. Almost everywhere on Earth where there is water, there is life. As a result, the hunt for the presence of water has been the main focus of the search for potentially habitable exoplanets. Previous studies revealed that water-bearing asteroids impacting our infant planet's surface after it originated provided the newborn Earth with a significant portion of its water. Now, scientists may have found evidence suggesting that water may have been one of the first elements present when rocky planets were born. The recent study concentrated on the young star PDS-70, which is around 370 light-years away from Earth. It is only around 5.4 million years old, but our Sun is about 4.6 billion years old, and has about three-quarters the mass of PDS-70. PDS-70 is a star similar to our Sun, but younger and cooler. By observing it, scientists can determine how the planets in our solar system initially came to be and what their initial chemical makeup was. The scientists found water at the center of the planet-forming disk of gas and dust surrounding this star, in the form of hot vapor at a temperature of roughly 625 degrees Fahrenheit using the mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, on the James Webb Space Telescope. The inner disk of this well-known system, where planets like Earth may be forming, has water. This center region of our solar system is where Earth and the other rocky planets evolved. These new findings imply that any rocky planets forming in the core region of PDS-70 would draw on a significant water reservoir, increasing the likelihood that they will eventually become habitable. The first somewhat old planet-forming disk where water has been found is PDS-70. Previous investigations failed to find water in the central portions of similar-aged disks, which prompted astronomers to hypothesize that the intense radiation from young stars may have virtually completely vaporized all water. But these recent discoveries refute that notion. Near the disk's center of this star, 
the researchers have not yet discovered any planets. Larger telescopes, such as the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA in Chile, are necessary to find any such worlds, according to Henning. However, they have found two PDS 70 B and C gas giant planets that are further away. According to Henning, the gravitational pull of these massive planets is actually blocking the flow of ice-rich rock from the disk's periphery into its center. The existence of this water could indicate that the PDS 70 system originated from a water-rich nebula, with the planet-forming zones dust and other materials protecting the water from the star's harmful radiation, according to the researchers. Another idea is that the oxygen and hydrogen gas that entered the PDS-70 disk's outer rims mixed to create water vapor, which may have then drifted toward the star. More planet-forming disks around young stars could be examined in future studies to determine if PDS-70 is an odd outlier. In addition, the James Webb Space Telescope has found the oldest carbon dust yet discovered in a galaxy. A group of astronomers discovered evidence of the substance that is the basis of all life using the powerful space telescope in 10 distinct galaxies that date back as far as 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The discovery of carbon dust so soon after the Big Bang may challenge accepted ideas about the universe's chemical development. This is due to the fact that heavier elements should take longer to form and distribute in galaxies than the age of these young galaxies at the time the James Webb Space Telescope observes them. The surprising finding here is that we can directly see and learn about the properties of these dust grains at such a young age, and we can tell they're carbon-based. In light of what we had previously anticipated, that is pretty unexpected. As part of the JWS Advanced Deep Extra Galactic Survey, JADES, the team discovered this carbon dust in the light spectrum from this sample of 10 galaxies. This type of detection is made possible by the fact that elements absorb and emit light at distinct wavelengths, leaving their fingerprints in light from galaxies and stars, among other sources. A bump in the absorption of particular UV light frequencies revealed the presence of aromatic hydrocarbon dust. How did these newborn galaxies become so swiftly carbon-enriched is the question. An astronomical, get-rich-quick scheme? The initial stars and galaxies should have had the same composition of just these light elements, since the early universe was primarily composed of hydrogen and helium, with a few trace amounts of certain heavier elements. Heavy elements like carbon and oxygen, according to conventional conceptions of the universe's chemical development, are created in the nuclear furnaces at the center of stars. When the first stars reached the end of their lives and ran out of nuclear fusion fuel, they exploded in supernovas, scattering the material they had created throughout the cosmos. Interstellar dust has incorporated this stellar stuff. The next generation of stars, which are thus richer in heavy elements and dwell in similarly enriched galaxies, are built from the material created when dense areas of this dust collapse. The results are an excellent example of the kind of science that wasn't feasible before the JWST. The universe is expanding, causing the light released by early galaxies to travel over billions of light years and take billions of years to reach us. The more distant and hence earlier the galaxy, the more intense the redshift is, stretching out light from the very first galaxies to infrared wavelengths. This causes ultraviolet light from galaxies to be pushed down the electromagnetic spectrum, a process known as redshift. Since these galaxies have been illuminating the universe for up to 12.8 billion years, their light has evolved into infrared radiation. Only the JWST is able to resolve details like these carbon fingerprints in the light from such far-off galaxies because it is the most sensitive infrared space observatory ever launched. The James Webb Telescope still has a lot of work to do. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.